Good evening and welcome to GT News. My name is Paul Gakuta. And I'm Agnes Tristow. Before we begin today's report, I have a question for you, Agnes. What are you having for dinner tonight? Well, I was planning on having fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Oh, did you say potatoes? What a coincidence. Recent studies have shown that natural curling allowed diversity allows potato cultivation in northern latitudes. For further information, we'll turn it over to Matt Pack, a potato botanist from Georgia Tech. Interestingly enough, the potato that we know and love, the one that we typically associate with the Irish, Idaho, and Russia, actually originated in South America, specifically in the Andes region. Since Europe and South America have two entirely different climates, the potato plants had to go through several adaptations in order to become viable in the region. Specifically, they had to adapt their tuberization. Now, what is tuberization? Well, it's defined as the ability to form tubers. That's helpful, right? Well, when you look at the potato plant, tubers are the things that we eat. The potato evolved short day dependent tuber formation as a propagation strategy in South America. Due to this, potatoes were short day dependent and would not make tubers in the long days of spring and summer in northern latitudes. From here, we were able to guess that one of the first selected traits allowing of European potato is likely to have been the long day tuberization. After that analysis, we used Arabidopsis thaliana, a model plant used in many plant studies, in order to figure out what certain genes may have actually initiated tuberization. So, flowering A. thaliana is initiated by a peptide hormone called flowering locust T, which is similar to STSP6A in potatoes. Uh, the potato homologue STSP6A has also been seen to initiate tuberization. Now, we had already known that reproductive development in potatoes is determined by several environmental cues. So we figured out that the gene that regulates tuberization in plant life cycle length does so by acting as a mediator between its circadian clock and the STSP6A tuberization signal. In Arabidopsis, expression of flowering locust T was controlled by the diurnally transcription factor constants, which we'll call Co. Activity of the co-protein was regulated by light by interaction with red and blue light receptors. It also acts downstream of a signaling cascade of other blue light absorbing proteins that regulate members of the cycling DOF factor family. Homologs of constants were also triggering tuberization. We'll reference these as ST-CO. ST -co. Uh, we screened for gene candidates and found a CDF homolog on chromosome 5, which we'll call STCDF1 based on regulatory links with STCO and STSP6A. Oh, breaking news! This just in. We have new information of the results of the experiment for our on-site reporter, Christina Owen. Take it away, Christina. Thanks, Agnes. I'm here with Dr. Marcus Spud, one of the lead researchers of the potato alleles experiment. So, Dr. Spud, could you tell the viewers a little bit about your experiment and what it encompasses? Well, we crossed two dipolar potatoes called SH82 and RH89, which had genes for amplified fragment length polymorphism, which is the occurrence of more than one form of phenotype. We then crossed their offspring, which called C and E, which we learned about uh, tube, tube propagation. This trait also affected canopy development, vegetative growth, leaf senescence, life cycle, life cycle length, and pathogen resistance. I see. So how exactly did you determine the gene for tube propagation for potatoes, despite its geographical limit in the Andes? Well, we analyzed the genes of some other common plants, such as Athelinia and S. tuberosum. We learned that the three genes, which, were, which we labeled as STCDF1.1, STCDF1.2, and STCDF1.3, were responsible for it. We used a genetic marker called Cleave Amplified Polymorphic Sequences to find the location of these genes on the north arm of the potato chromosome 5. Uh, polymerase chain reactions were also used to amplify the single gene. The genes were cloned using primers, the starting point for DNA synthesis. Controls did you have in the experiment? We grew the potatoes in a greenhouse with long day conditions, which encompassed 16 hours of light followed by 8 hours of darkness. At these conditions, the potatoes do not form tubers. Sprouting tubers were also planted in 20 centimeter pots and chambers with controlled temperature, humidity, and light for three months. We also had potatoes in short day conditions, which were 8 hours of light and 16 hours of dark. To test the, the, to test the leaf senescence, the ability for leaves to grow old, we harvested leaves at 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 14 o'clock, 18 o'clock, and 22 o'clock on a 24 hour scale. So that's absolutely fascinating. 
So specifically, what did you do with the offspring of the parental potatoes, the C and E descendants? Well, eight F1 genotypes were evaluated. We performed field trials in Agrigrow Research BV and Blonde for each gen genotype that was planted per trial field. We then created a score system from one to nine, one being late maturity and nine being early maturity. We determined scores by referencing the maturity of several other plants. So can you tell us what the results of your experiment were? Well, the CE3027 diploid potato that is homozygous for the STCDF 1.1 allele expressed a peak in protein levels between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. The CE3130 potato showed that the CTDF 1.2 and 1.3 proteins, fiber proteins, remain constant throughout the day. Two constant genes, STCL1 and STCL2, were found to repress tubal formation on long days. These chijuns are transcriptionally repressed in S and GM lines that have the STCDF 1.2 transgene under long day conditions. Repression of the STCO1 and 2 expression by STCDF1 indirectly causes STSP6A expression by downregulating STSP5G. This study uncovered important marker by trade associations for single nucleotide polymorphism markers within a short range linkage disequilibrium with the causal insertion of polymorphisms in STCDF1. It was confirmed that only the chromosome 5 region showed strong influence on plant maturity. Excellent. Wow! So that's why potatoes can live in northern latitudes, although they originated in the Andes. The diverse STCDF1 alleles proved that potatoes can live in different day conditions. Thanks, Dr. Spud. Back to you, Polo and Agnes. Thanks, Christina. That's all we have for this segment. We'll be back before you can count two. Potato. Go. Go.